so thank you very much for all joining on the uh, the last um, uh, set of slots we have in the IG Pilot Conference. And this evening we have um, Alex, better known as Yapu, who will be talking about the FR Sky telemetry. Thank you very much, Alex. Uh, you're welcome. Actually, I have to thank you for uh, for giving me this opportunity. So, okay, um, as Twitch said, uh, about two, two years ago, I started uh, playing with the Free Sky Telemetry Library, and uh, on the other side of the of the of the problem, I mean, you have you encode telemetry from ArduPipe, and you need a way to display it on your radio. And so I started playing with the uh, Lua telemetry on OpenTX. Okay. So what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about the FreeSky library. So I'm going to give a brief introduction about this, uh, of what ArduPilot can do with uh, FreeSky telemetry. Then we're going to take it, uh, a look at scripting support for uh, this telemetry library. And then we're going to talk about bidirectional telemetry. Which is something that uh, the FreeSky um, FreeSky radio link can do uh, since uh, the very beginning, and but uh, Arju Pilot did never take advantage of it, so I just gave it a, a shot. Okay. So this is what we are talking about, which is uh, uh, a flight controller and some kind of wire into the receiver. And then there's uh, the radio uh, that can, for uh, RC control, is one way. So in this slide, it's from the right to the left. And we usually have a telemetry uh, from the vehicle left to right. Okay, this is the normal stuff, is what we have uh, right now. Uh, I added, uh, I tried to have uh, uh, the telemetry go both ways okay so this is what we will see later on i'm gonna go quite fast in the, the first slide so it's just an overview of a system that uh, we already had and, and most of us know okay you can stop me in any moment and ask for uh, and ask if something is not clear or, or just tell me if i go too fast okay so Let's go to FS port, which is smart port and F port, which are the two technologies that we that RG Pilot supports for uh, telemetry. Actually, RG Pilot supports also a couple older protocols, but um, I'm not going to talk about that because uh, these two S port and this one. Okay. Um, how do how does export work? Uh, export is a uh, is bidirectional, and is a master slave protocol. Actually, both of them, export and export, are both uh, a master slave protocol. Where the biggest difference is that export uh, is just for telemetry, uh, whilst export is both for uh, RC control and telemetry. Is the receiver okay? So the receiver pulls uh, information every around 12 millis, and the flight controller has to detect this polling and respond. Okay, in F port, the master is the radio, okay, which sends uh, uh, a controlled frame followed by an uplink data frame at around 100 hertz, and the flight controller. Uh, has to respond to this information by sending a downlink data frame. These two protocols have in common a payload. They both have a six bytes payload, and uh, which is all we, it, it's all we have to transfer information back and forth, okay? This is important, we'll see you know, in a while why this is important. Um, both S port and F port GX radio, and depending on what we put in uh, the app ID and in the data, you get on the radio uh, information displayed as a sensor, 
uh, regular sensors that you discover on the telemetry page or you get information in another way which is the the one way uh, that the uh, pass-through uh, protocol uses but we'll see this in a while well I, um, the interesting part about this is that they both share the same structure so if you take a look at the the blue boxes you see that that this this structure is repeated repeated all over and this allows us to use the same the same uh, uh, library to service uh, telemetry for both uh, protocols so let's talk a, a little bit about how fast this thing can can work and as port bandwidth uh, by having zero sensors chained on the export bus, which is uh, uh, for export the bus, is just uh, all sensors are, uh, are wired in parallel, okay? And by having zero extra uh, physical sensors on the bus, uh, we get a polling uh, about uh, every 24 millis because sensors are pulled in a round robin fashion. So if we only respond to one sensor, you get, let's say sensor A, you get a poll for sensor A and you respond, then you get a poll for sensor B and you do not respond, then the, the master will pull again sensor A because you, you, you responded uh, to the first poll, then we'll send sensor C, then A again, then D, then A again. So you actually get a, a free slot every every other uh, polling and this gives you a bandwidth of around 1.3 kilobits okay which is really low and um, if you increase the number of sensors this means you respond to polling for sensor a then you respond to polling for sensor b then you sensor a then b then you skip d and so on which is the example uh, right here the average polling time goes down to 18 millis and you got 1.7 kilos and so on. So the more sensors you use, uh, the more bandwidth you have. Uh, RGPALE right now uh, responds only to one sensor, which is uh, HEX uh, 1B. And so in a normal situation, uh, the bandwidth we, that we have is this one. So we have 41 slots uh available to send data from the flight controller down to the to the radio f port works in another way uh, since it was designed from the ground up to be both uh, uh to, to carry both uh, rc control and uh, telemetry it's a much faster protocol when it goes from the from the radio to the flight controller and we have uh, two technologies here and free sky receivers at 2.4 gigas and at 900 megahertz so we have short range and long range uh, technology the faster is the short range because it has a wider uh, spectrum and it can send information it can send packets at 100 hertz from the radio to the flight controller but uh, we can only use two thirds of it, so we can actually use uh, 60, 60 hertz to send information back. So in, it's uh, it's not symmetrical. No, we can uh, send information from the radio to the flight controller at 100 hertz and respond at 60. This at 2.4 gigas. When we go for long range technology with the long range technology, we have we we, we are a little bit lower. The, the downlink from the master, which is the, ra uh, the radio to the flight controller, uh, is at, at 60 hertz, and we can respond at 40. So there's another big difference, uh, which is the quality of the of the link. In Sport, uh, which is a more mature technology. Okay, it's below 1%. Uh, so it, 
we, we hardly we hardly lose any packets in f port um, the situation is not as good we have between 10 and 15 percent of drop packets i'm talking about telemetry packet not rc not rc control and we also have quite uh, uh, some duplicated packets um, there's also There's also some kind of frame rate control uh, to prevent uh, uh, prevent to prevent from from running out of buffer space when uh, information is sent from the flight controller down to the uh, to the receiver, and especially for uh, faster the, the faster of the two here the 2.4 gigas, there's a special uh, the the receiver can signal to the flight controller that um telemetry can be sent can that um, the flight control can respond with telemetry data okay so um the, it's the receiver that tells us uh, which of the downlink uh, uh packets we receive we can respond to okay this is not in effect for uh this lower link and so we have to actually count the packet that we send to stay below this 40 hertz so we have an active active control here and then we have uh, uh, our duplicate counter packets and never send more than two packets in a row when working for with this technology okay so we have uh, uh, our duplicate uses uses two strategies to uh, um, uh, we can simulate pre sky sensors so we can uh, inject data into the radio link and let the radio think that we have genuine uh, free sky sensors chained on the bus or we can uh, inject custom payload in those six bytes and tell the radio to ignore them not try to uh, decode them as uh, uh, free sky sensors pass that information to lua to be decoded by a script uh, with f4 we have a, a third option in uh, in rg pilot which is serial protocol 23 which gives both uh, uh, remote control and pass through telemetry on the same uh, uh, cable okay and we hopefully will have also a two-way soft serial uh, connection i'm i said that the biggest difference here between f port and f port is it's the the capability of carrying both uh, rc control and telemetry which reflects uh, which um, also changes the way we we wire this to to our flight to our flight controller for for s port we need the two uh two wires from your receiver one for rc control and one for telemetry okay with f port uh, since we carry both uh, you only need one wire okay so f port is just a big step forward because you're gonna um, use one less uh, port in your uh, flight control okay let's go on what happens on OpenTX when you when uh, a packet is received? Well, OpenTX checks uh, the frame received, the frame type, which is this one, and, and uh, application ID. Okay, it does two things. Okay, for 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 data frames which are hex one ten. If the application ID is a non free sky sensor, these four data bytes, data bytes are used to populate the sensor value. So, this is the standard way to send information to, uh, to OpenTX. Five, oh, 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 and hex five, oh, ff, which is known as do it yourself range. The whole frame is pushed to the lower receive queue. So, Lua can pop this whole frame and process it. 
and we we have the frame which is kind of fixed okay we have the sensor id which is uh, the sensor we responded to the polling okay which is a this is hex 1b and we have the application id which is in this range and then we have the data the only thing that we can change here is the data because when we use uh, uh, hex 10 frames the application is id is fixed between this and this and so we only have a four byte payload if from uh, from the flight controller we we send a hex 32 frame then uh, OpenTX does not check the application ID and pushes all six bytes. Okay, so all six bytes to, to Lua. And so we gain two bytes for, for per frame, which is a big improvement in speed. Hope this makes sense to you. Okay, <laughs> let's go on. So how does the, the pass-through telemetry work? The pass-through telemetry uh, actually has a Byte, so the application ID and the data um, to pack uh, multiple information into a single 32 bit uh, uh, into a single 32 bit uh, uh, unsigned integer. Okay, this is the list of the, of the packet types that currently the library supports. This is is grayed out because this is actually is used as a um, In the range we talked before, so from hex uh, 5000 up to 8. So we got the status text. These are um, status text messages are chunked in four bytes and sent one after the other. We have the RG pilot status, uh, GPS, battery one, home, velocity, attitude, and parameter. Each one is sent with different. Uh, um with a different uh, at a different rate uh, based on, on a priority so we want that status text messages since they are kind of big they they get sent fast also we want attitude and range founder fast and other information we can we can go a little bit slower and for instance uh, uh just okay oh, no and one more thing is stateless okay this means that uh, each packet does not depend on any other packet and which means that if you lose a packet nothing really bad happens okay uh, the open text radio is, is not even able to tell that we lost the packet this is evident only in uh, when sending uh, status text messages uh, because those chunks have to be uh, sent in the right order and have to be received Of them otherwise you get corruption so if on the radio you see that your status text message message is missing uh for charity then you know that you lost probably one or more uh telemetry packets which can which can happen is not doesn't happen quite often but it does happen and as a workaround we send uh, this message this uh, this packet we send it three times in the hope that uh, sending by sending it multiple times, we don't lose it along the way. Okay. Um, okay. Here uh, there's a box velocity and yo. I just wanted to show how uh, velocity and yo information is encoded in these four bytes. So these are the 32 bits available. We use uh, 11 bits for yo, and uh, 11 bits, 12 bits for vertical speed. This uh, is the way that we uh, take advantage of kind of the compression. We, we round the information. So in the example of vertical speed, we also have a sign. We have one bit for sign, uh, seven bits for to encode the vertical speed and one bit for multiplying this by 10 
because this is a kind of a compression. We lose a bit of pack, a lot of information in, a, in, a, in 32 bits. And we do this for all these packets. Okay, when, we, when, uh, when you see multiple information, it means that we pack that information in, a, in those 32 bits. Also, the pass-through protocol, since we have a different uh, rate for each, uh, for each packet type, um, we need a way to tell which packet is the next one that we have to, to send. So there's a scheduler or scheduler, I don't know, it depends on the, on the pronunciation, which has dynamic priorities and also shapes high priority packets like antigen and status because we want them fast, but not too fast. Okay especially uh, attitude because the radio cannot uh, render uh, that information any faster than let's say 15 to 20 Hertz. So there's no way to waste the uh, uh, bandwidth by sending it uh, too fast, okay? Uh, so this scheduler, what it does is uh, choose which one of these packets to send to keep these frames, okay? Nothing uh, like it's pretty easy to understand. Um, a big advantage we had with Shedware is that uh, a packet can starve other packets, okay? Which was something that happened in the, in the past with uh, the previous uh, uh, implementation. Um, where, for instance, when you did a, a note tune, uh, all the messages generated by all, all the status text messages uh, generated by the autotune process would starve and, and freeze your telemetry stream. And with this shadow, this does not does not happen anymore. Your core, how your battery is doing uh, during autotune, which was a pretty common uh, problem. Uh, you had the autotune going seven, eight, nine minutes. And your battery was going down you had no idea what was going on okay so this problem is done so what do we know so far so we know that rg pilot supports both uh, s port and f port we know that both are bidirectional with six byte payload we know that rg pilot can emulate three sky sensor and that uses pass through telemetry on top of both s port and f port and we also know that OpenTX can send and receive S4 network packet frames. Okay, so we have all the pieces together to build something. And this is what I've done uh, uh, in the last few years. So I implemented a, a pass through uh, decoder in Lua. And I, I wrote the, the rendering on which are the uh, color LCD one. And also for the Tyrannis radios for the bigger and the, and the, um, the bigger X9 and uh, QX7. So we have a bunch of information here, uh, pretty much uh, everything. Or oh, lately I also done a, a moving map by using the, the GPS information. It's offline if somebody wants. <laughs> uh, it's an offline GPS map. And I've also done a couple of customization. This one is for BFD systems uh, to use a, a fat ring. Uh, so with what the, the library sends right now, which is uh, battery current uh, altitude, uh, uh, ground speed and airspeed, you can pretty much uh, know what's going on on your, on your vehicle, okay? There's also another customization for example this one is the um, battery percentage by voltage by entering a, a discharge curve um, you can monitor your battery and you don't need a, a current monitor which is was done for ace car technology um, so this the system is really flexible you can do pretty much everything the one thing you you, you can do right now is extend uh, extend uh, the type of information that you send from your flight controller. And if you want to do that, you have to touch the code 
which uh, turns out to be a nightmare uh, because you it takes time and it's not for for anybody okay so if users want to extend the information uh, and need uh, for instance uh, the wind estimate they would have to uh, change the, the free sky calamity library and which, which is not that easy i mean it's doable for sure but it's not that easy and not anybody can do so i was looking for a way to extend uh, the library in an easy way and we'll see a way that uh, and we'll see how okay so and uh, simulate free sky sensors send custom payload and receive custom payload right now by sending custom payload we have the pursuit telemetry we'll see scripting support by using uh, these two technologies these two strategies okay simulation of free sky sensor and custom payload and by using custom, by sending and receiving custom payload, we'll see bidirectional telemetry. There's a, an extra point, which is access to free sky sensors, which we'll discuss at the end. This is something I haven't, uh, I haven't tried yet, but it should be doable, okay? So let's go to the scripting support. I added a new binding for uh, the free sky telemetry library uh, to push telemetry down that this is injects actually telemetry down the, the radio link this is a helper function to do the kind of compression that we've seen before uh, the pass through uh, by the pass through library to send down the numbers down the rate link and this is another helper function that lets uh, uh, that calculates the, um, the information that it's needed to send uh, to use the export telemetry push we'll see in a while just here the idea is to inject user data into the export export telemetry streams and mostly to create custom free sky sensors from the scripting create custom pasture telemetry data from scripting and eventually why not create a new user custom telemetry protocol okay there's also a grayed out option which is to receive custom export and export packets this would allow to control scripts from uh, your open text radio okay let's see um, the most important uh, uh, binding that i added which is the export telemetry push you have to you you need to specify the sensor the frame type application ID is the data. This is the um, always the same information that we've seen for both export and export. It always uh, it's this is the way this uh, uh, technology works. So for ID, you cannot use uh, the sensor IDs that you are already using on your uh, setup. So if you do not have any extra free sky sensor and you're just using uh, RG pilot, for instance, you cannot use hex 1B, which is sensor 27. You will have to use uh, any other sensor. And if you're using the gas suite, uh, which is sensor 22, you cannot use that one either. Okay, so you will have to know a little bit about your setup to choose which sensor to use. But it's not that that difficult. We'll probably add the information in the wiki, I guess, telling which are the, the typical sensors and which you should expect to find free. Anyway, this in, this this function uh, populates a one element buffer, a single element, and the library checks this buffer whenever there's a chance to send a packet, which happens in, happens in two ways. In export, the library waits. For a polling for the sensor you specify here. In export, the library waits for the shadower to use a, a user data slot. Okay, since the shadower is in uh, in charge of finding of uh, controlling the rates of all the packets, you need to wait for the uh, for the shadower to find the slot uh, for you. So when you put user data 
wait a little bit. I tune the, the, the priority to give uh, up to between five and 10 hertz of user data. Okay, if you do not use that, that bandwidth, the shadow will uh, distribute it to, to other packet types. So it's not a big deal. You cannot go faster than that unless you completely disable uh, the pass-through streams and use the, all the polling for your own data, which helps you do what we, we wrote here, create a new user custom telemetry. So I added a, a parameter to disable um, pass-through telemetry. So let's see how this works. So we can write a little script that uh, injects RPM data. We use sensor ID 4, which is the, the actual RPM, let's see, the actual uh, RPM sensor used by Fusky. We push a data frame 10 because we want to create a, a Fusky genuine sensor. So we want to trick OpenTX and send sensor data. This is a number that we, uh, this is the application ID, which means uh, sensor number rpm sensor sensor number one you can have up to 16 15 sensors so we have uh, per type so we have uh, rpm one rpm two this is a little script that runs at uh, i ask it to run at 10 hertz okay and this is another script that gets wind information and injects it into um, as as uh, as uh, free sky sensors so data frame this is the application id for um for ground this is the application id for heading and this is the application id for uh for speed okay so I have wind speed, wind direction, and airspeed. I inject all this into the stream. I ask this to go uh, at uh, four hertz, okay? And this is the little video that shows uh, uh, what you would, how you would see the RPM sensors in uh, uh, OpenTX after doing discovery. Let's start this. So what you actually see is that we are getting those those uh, those uh, sensors. I've been sending down the the free sky link. This is all mixed, interleaved with uh, uh, pass through information. Okay, so we get both. And I have another uh, short uh, short video where I, where you can see that I actually fuse all this information. The schedule is sending both. Uh, uh, my custom sensors from uh, injected from scripting with the regular uh, pass through telemetry. So, what you see here down uh, in the bottom airspeed, wind speed, he uh, wind, head, uh, wind direction, and then you have RPM1 and RPM2, and then you also. So this is to show that without touching uh, Arduino Pilot or, for instance, my, my script, you can get custom information from uh, from scripting down to your radio and on your screen, fused with uh, the regular information you get from the pass-through telemetry. Okay, so this is very easy even for custom projects. Okay, uh, so this was uh, the first thing that you can do with scripting. So. extend the pass through telemetry straight from scripting by packing data uh, in a compatible way and uh, and using um, and using the, the do it yourself range so if you use this application id opentx will send in the information to lua to be decoded okay which is different from what we see here because this is not in the do it uh, you do it yourself range so OpenTX will treat this as a, a sensor and render the sensor inside OpenTX 
if you use the range that we've seen before, which is, I'll go a couple of slides, excuse me. Okay, if you use packets in this range, okay, OpenTX will skip the rendering and, and pop it from the web, okay. Um, okay, so this is another example. I'm using the, I'm, I'm stuffing, I'm packing uh, waypoint information, so distance, bearing, waypoint distance, waypoint bearing, and cross-track error into uh, 32 bits. And I'm pushing it, I'm pushing it to uh, my radio. This is all, uh, it's made up information, it's fake. It's just, uh, uh, it's just to show that it can be done, okay. Let's see how it works. Um, you see right down here where you have a waypoint number, waypoint distance, and then under uh, you have, the, uh, you have the, the waypoint bearing right here. Let's see. So you see there, there are, so this is, this is turning, just simply turning. This is waypoint numbers. Okay, this is just a short video to show you that it can be done. It's again, uh, you don't need to touch the free sky telemetry library. All you do is write a little script uh, to inject data. And you need to obviously extend the decoding on the, on the radio side to handle this information. But again, you do not have to touch the, the free sky library. Um, so basically, with scripting plus the free sky telemetry library, you can turn anything scripting can access into a free sky sensor for live data display or logging. You can extend the pass through telemetry and you can actually create a complete custom telemetry protocol. This is another uh, good point because OpenTX has a built-in logging capability. Uh, so you can create as many free sky sensors as you want in your script, send, send those down your radio link, have them logged on your radio for a, a later review. So you can re review it in, uh, in Companion, which is the software that lets you manage your radio and you can do a playback of your data which is an easy, an easy way to uh, have some logging done uh, if you do not have, for instance, a uh, MAV link coming down your, uh, coming from your vehicle, okay. Let's go on. Okay, so now there's the third part of my presentation, which is the bidirectional telemetry. Still the idea is that we want to take advantage of two-way capability that the, both S-Port and F-Port have. And let's see if we can do something interesting with it because we, right now, there's no way to send, inf to send uh, information from the radio to the flight controller, except for RC control. And so let's see what, what I, I've come up with, okay. So the idea is to create a new protocol which uh, should use S port and F port as a transport. And so the idea here is we want to transfer a generic modeling sky container with a variable length payload. Uh, it should not be an alternative to pass through. So there's no way to, to go any faster than pass through for telemetry data. But we need a, a, complementar, a complementary protocol to go the other way around, you know, to go from the radio to the flight controller. And this should be able to transfer messages in chunks of six bytes because we wanna be, we will be using frame zero three uh, hex three two, which is the kind of frame that uh, um, OpenTX passes to Lua regardless of the application ID. Well, and it should be simple to implement in Lua because we need to, uh, to have the two implementations, one on the, on the flight controller or one in the, Free sky telemetry library and one in uh, uh, on the radio. 
and the name I call it Mavlight, which is because it was Mavlink like and light. So that's the name I, I chose. <laughs> so the master stru structure is really close to, to, Ma to Mavlink. So we have a message ID, we have a LAN, <coughs> we have a payload, and there's a checksum at the end. Maximum payload right now is 31 bytes, which is the size of the biggest sub on the equivalent. <coughs> so oh, maybe I was too fast, I don't know. If if you need the if if you want to stop me for question, you just go ahead. Okay. Um let's take a look at the packet types. Uh we we want packet types that take advantage of those six bytes that are sent uh, as a S port or F port data frame. So we have a byte for sequence, one byte for message ID, one byte for a payload length, and then we have the payload. So this is the, fir the first packet. All other packets, we only have a byte sequence, a max of five or four or five byte payload, and then the last byte will, will be the CRC. This is a pretty standard multi, um, multi packet uh, um, message type, okay? This, I wrote a note here because uh, which is overkill because we don't need the message is that big so we might use the first three bits as a magic prefix to identify map, map like packets so this would allow us to share the frame type with other protocols okay so for instance we might have map like working and a user defined uh, two-way protocol from scripting okay by using those three bits to identify to uh, identify the Um, so my the message IDs that I use are the same as Mavlink, so it's much easier for end users to understand what we're talking about. So message twenty, re, uh, param request width, param set, param value, common long and common ec. So these are the five message types that I've been playing with. Uh, the data types that I had to support are variable length. Up to 16 charts. We have 32 bits. I triple is was kind of hard because uh, OpenTX Lua does not have built in packing and unpacking for those uh, those floats, so I had to write it from scratch. And then we have unsigned integers of 16 bits and unsigned in integers of 8 bits. Okay. So with these uh, four data types, we can support all these uh, message types, okay? Let's take a look at a couple of examples, okay? Uh, messages param value, uh, ma the mad like payload for param value is four bytes for the parameter as an IEEE float and up to 16 bytes for the name in this order. So we have a fixed length uh, element for So if we, for instance, want to send a value for Q enable equal one, uh, we would have one byte for message ID, one byte to specify the length of the message, which would be four plus eight. So the size of flow plus the length of the string Q enable excluding the terminator and one byte for a checksum so all these plus the one one byte for sequence would require three frames so the first thing that i should have said is that this is a this is a multi uh, it's a multi-frame protocol okay so in this case is a stateful protocol like tcp for instance whilst uh, the pass through protocol is stateless so if we lose packets in this protocol, uh, the packet is discarded because the sequence is checked. Okay, so uh, th this is why uh, F port that there, there's a 15% packet loss. If in that 15%, we lose one of these packets, 
uh, we lose the whole message. Okay, and this is a protocol. This is a problem, uh, especially for uh, for Medlite. What I a partial workaround is to repeat messages. So right now, uh, the workaround is to repeat uh, each frame each uh, each frame two times. Okay, so to lower the the probability that we we lose it. Now let's check an example common long. So for a common long, we have two bytes for command ED, one byte for command options, which are three bits for the parameters count and five for confirmation counter, which is unused at the moment. And then up to seven parameters and four byte floats. And you can, there's no uh, target, uh, there's no target ID here, system and component. So right now the only target is the autopilot and, and I'll explain uh, later why. Um, let's take a look at the, for example, message long Q41, calibrate ground pressure. So we have message ID is 76 and 15 is the length of the message. Then we got two bytes for common ID, one byte for options and three bytes for, and three, uh, four bytes floats. So we get 18 bytes, 18 bytes plus the byte, one byte for sequence, which requires four bytes for frame. So you see these are quite big messages and with the bandwidth that we have, which is around 40, uh, 46 bytes frames per second, it's not a fast protocol for all. Uh, it's absolutely uh, slow, <laughs> and, but it works. So it depends on what you, you want to achieve, okay? Let's go on. Now let's talk about, this is from the Arduopilot side, okay? So this is, um, no, this is both actually. <laughs> this is uh, the encoding on both sides is done this way. And Lua, G Lua GCS is my, uh, my new implementation of MavLite to try to interact with a flight controller from my OpenTX radio, okay? So I implemented both uh, parameters and commands and I, all messages are encoded in a single Lua library. So it's pretty simple to use it uh, for, uh, it's quite easy to use. Okay, not that easy, but it's, <laughs> it's quite easy to use. There's no bulk parameter done. And so we'll see that the pilot will need to know in advance which parameters he, will, he wants to take to the field. So um, here, the, the what, what I, was, I was thinking is that, you know, the, you, you are on the bench, you're tuning your, your vehicle, you know, which are the most critical parameters that you might be willing to tune uh, at the field. And you write those down in a, them with you uh, on your radio. But to make this a little bit more flexible, I organize this uh, information in pages on your radio. So there are pages dedicated to tuning, there are global pages, there are vehicle specific pages, and there are model specific pages. So you can have, let's say, this means that you, you can have a list of parameters that uh, uh, you use for a specific model. want to use on a model you have a list of parameters that you only use on the specific vehicles so you might parameters for a plane or for a copter and this way of organizing information make it makes it a little easier uh, to browse um, to, to actually use it okay it makes the user experience better on the, on the radio let's see how uh, how this in, this configuration is actually done on uh, on your radio. Uh, this is a little example. So you have a, a plain Lua GCS setup. We might have a, a plain tuning page. Then we have a a soaring a page dedicated to soaring parameters. Then we might have a page dedicated to fences. And then we have might have a page dedicated to parameter specific for this particular model. 
then you might have a, a page with user commands and user commands uh, for for uh, the vehicle type for the plane and then user commands for this specific model is one thing that comes in mind into mind with the model commands if you if you have like a, a gripper or something that you want to command from and you only have it on one model okay so you you should create separate files for each of these pages and so with parent name mean max increment and label okay these are rendered by the uh, Lua, uh, Lua GCS into pages that the user can navigate. So by editing these files, you can change the way it, uh, it looks on, the, on your radio. And you can have a, this is for tuning, and this is the rendering. So I actually, uh, the, the mission pilot layout for the, the tuning of plane, copter, and rover. And if, um, so this is not fixed, okay? So the, the rendering engine reads this information and uh, draws what you see on screen. So if you change this, you can change it anytime and have your own tuning, uh, tuning page. This is one, is, is the ones I, I did to, to, to make Then you also have uh, the parameters, the tip, the um, uh, parameters page uh, uh, example. So you, array of parameter again, name, min, max, increment, and label. So, um, and this is rendered this way. Okay. So you get a page with ten scrollable parameters. So you can you can also have like twenty. And you you will have to scroll down if you want to have them all uh, visible. You have to say uh, you, you you only have 10, 10 slots per page, so you have to adjust uh, the number of part of the, the the number of elements in the array. And so this is the view that you, that you get when you go, you press page and you pass from this one to the next one, which is this one. And parameter uh, info. So while you're tuning your vehicle, you also have uh, uh, feedback from what's going on. So you see the messages, the status text messages, and the most important telemetry information. So the flight mode, arming status, uh, GPS fix, and so on. Let's see. Uh, a command file uh, example setup. So you have array of commands, you have the label, the command list, the command parameter list, command ID, and which which one to show as a default. So to I created a calibrate um, menu where you have ground pressure, accelerometer, and board level. These are the parameters that are needed for each one of these. This is the command ID. And this is the rendering that you get. So it's the parameter one under the other, and you can uh, there's a little demo. So I'm gonna start the video. So you should you see it's not fast, and the biggest problem here is that. Uh, OpenTX, uh, just like scripting, is uh, is ran at, uh, um, so it's, it's not easy to manage a, a queue of pending parameters today. Anyway, we could probably do better by working. Okay, I, I, I'm going through the pages. This is the plain tuning page, downloading the parameters from the vehicle. I'm pressing the page button and going through the pages. This is the soaring parameter downloaded in the soaring par uh, This is the soaring parameter page downloaded parameters. And this is commands. 
page. Okay, and now I'm gonna try to, to change the arming rather option. So I'm gonna press, scroll to change it, press again, and this will send it. Okay, was sent. Okay. And also we have we see on the on the log that I received the matches Armin uh, rather two. I change the old team level, and now I'm going to show how to send the commands and trigger a ground calibration. Now you see I failed there because I'm not parsing that result equal four, okay, right now. So, and this is the reboot, okay. So I'm not, um, I am, I'm accepting just a subset of those uh, of uh, command long because one of the problems I had is uh, was accessing uh, a generic, uh, the vehicle Mavlink backend, okay. This, uh, um, uh, so this is one of the issue, issues I, I've found. It's not that easy from the FreeSky library to inject custom, to inject the arbitrary Mavlink messages into uh, the message, the the vehicle message streams, and so what I ended up doing was to uh, inst instantiate my own uh, Mavlink, uh, uh, Mavlink, Mavlink GCS Mavlink object, uh, initializing it by uh, a dummy serial, a, a dummy UART, and uh, a dummy uh, configuration. So. So I have, uh, with the object I'm using right now, I have no access to the vehicle. I in the GCS mapping, okay, not to the overrides provided by the vehicle. That's why right now uh, I'm, I'm able to execute only a subset of those commands. And other, um, but thanks to what we've seen uh, uh, from uh, from Michael, and he recently added the, the option to uh, to inject custom to read and write actually to uh, receive and send Mavlink from the scripting backend, so I can kind of uh, copy that approach and probably have uh, find a way to do this from the RGPilot library, and that would uh, would allow to perhaps control a gimbal, like a, a Mavlink gimbal from, from your radio, which is something nice that I might be able to do. Um, in my, uh, my, during the time I spent with f and s the, the most annoying, uh, uh, the most annoying one is the, the dropped and duplicated packets. I don't think there's a there's a workaround for this, and I, I just think that we have to live with it. So the protocol we have to find a way to compensate for packet loss, and there's not much we can do about it, and we can sure improve the wiring. Uh, so take care taking care of inversion and duplex. And with, uh, uh, for instance, the best would be soft serial. I know that this is gonna, it's not gonna make uh, Twitch happy because he's the one who has to implement it, but it's gonna simplify things a lot. And so what's up for the future? Um, one thing that we might be of interest is using the free sky export sensors as RGPI sensors. 
So like in instantiating a, a second free sky backend dedicated to, to those sensors or using the same one that we use for uh, telemetry and uh, read the sensor value, virtual drivers for them. Okay, this might be of interest, I don't know. Then we can improve pass through by using uh, six byte payload and switching to hex three uh, two frames. So if we need to actually add new information to pass through, even by using scripting, not necessarily by uh, modifying the pass through telemetry library, we might switch to that the two frame hex of 32, which uh, gives us a little more, uh, more bandwidth. Then allow Mavlite to target other system components, like I, like I just said, you perhaps use a, a gimbal or something like that. And uh, enable scripting to receive uh, uh, packets from the, from the radio. So bidirectional scripting support, this would allow to control scripts from your radio. So imagine in the in the menu, you you not only have a, um, common longs, but you also have custom custom user commands, where you send a specific value to one of your scripts on your on your vehicle. You know you can do all sorts of stuff with this, control LEDs or whatever you want. Okay, so I think I'm done. And if you have any questions, please feel feel free to ask. Okay, thank you very much. Marvelous. Uh, thank you so much, Alex. That was really fascinating. Uh, and the the free sky telemetry and the you know what you've done with the yard telemetry scripts has really been greatly appreciated in the community. So, do we have any questions from the floor? I like to say, great. And it's, uh, yeah, really useful stuff. And um, I personally have been using it, all, uh, using what you've been doing a lot and, and really enjoying it. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's, it's also the other way around, so. <laughs> So who's trying to speak there? It's Henry. Henry. I think your audio is not working, Henry. Uh, fortunately, your microphone's not working properly. We're just getting static. Um, it was so a, I had a question. question in the chat. Ah, okay. Uh, the question from Valentin, would it be possible to reveal the telemetry data over the USB port? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think so. There's a there's a PR pending to to have OpenTX access the serial port, and uh, okay, let's see which USB. Uh, the question I would yes, yes he said okay. yes. Okay, okay. Um, there's a PR in the OpenTX uh, in OpenTX to to send in from, to have uh, Lua access to the serial ports. So in that case, uh, um, there used to be there. I think that write access is already there. The PR is to get the read access. So I think that we might uh, might be able to inject that that information also down to the serial port. Um, right now. Uh, Lua on OpenTX does not have uh, direct access to the USB port. So serial is, will probably be possible. USB, it would probably, it will need uh, support from the OpenTX team. Fantastic. Uh, one thing I was curious about, Alex, when you were showing the change in the parameter, the arming rudder and other parameters, uh, I noticed that you displayed it using the enum value. So when you were changing from arming rudder to the, and it knew that value two meant arm disarm, where does the knowledge of the enums come from? Is that parsed out of our parameter XML data or how does it know to display value two as arm slash disarm? This is a very good question. Right now, that knowledge is uh, in my head. <laughs> no, it's the, it's the the pilot has to to download this, to know this information to 
to compile that that uh, enum but we, uh, i've seen that we are working on uh, on a way to have like a, a json or a a, a better an, an easy to parse uh, uh, format i think that we we might be able to, to to make a generator for that information which would would be great i mean the user would just choose which parameter to take to the field and the generator would generate that lua files yeah uh, yeah, that, that make it a lot easier. Uh, I think that we have to add Alex to the GCS maintainers list. I think so, definitely. Uh, isn't he already on it? I'm not sure. We, we have a mailing list called GCS maintainers for information for ground station authors, and I think that the Yapu telemetry scripts counts as, you know, as a ground station. Uh, so uh, yes, we'll, we'll discuss that later. Well, that okay. was absolutely brilliant. Any any final questions from the floor? Henry just wrote down one here asking about uh, Goo. So, yeah, so Henry asked whether has anyone considered or volunteered to do a GUI app to generate the Lua files for the commands, etc., for a non scripting uh -huh. user? No. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> volunteered. <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the, there are. Uh, from a generator, uh, for instance, the ones to uh, let end users choose which sensors to show and the parameters and commands. So uh, the structure is really trivial, okay? M most of the work would be to parse, uh, to, to download the information from uh, the actual source and, uh, and parse it. Uh, there's another question, but I don't think it's so much for um, Alex, but more for Dridge. Frequently is about having the free sky sensors working as Arduino pilot sensors. Yes, we could possibly do that. I haven't, I haven't tried, but it it should be possible. Uh, we should be able to receive the data. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Alex. Uh, really greatly appreciated. So a round of applause uh, for Alex. Thank you very much.